We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash All-Star events. Welcome to Rugby M here on Free Spots. We've got loads going on today. Wagger takes us to the GPW Recruitment St Helens 10k race in aid of the Steve Prescott Foundation. You can win four hospitality tickets courtesy of Bachelor's Peas to the Hull Derby on Good Friday. We have the first instalment of our exclusive behind the scenes footage inside the England camp. And we're joined Jonesy today in the studio. Unbelievable guest, my good friend. Somebody your, your who inspires man crush. me. Well, your man crush. Listen, we're going to have to leave that there. We can't keep pushing this out. Yet. But he's somebody who does his, uh, inspire me. And uh, as, as, as good as he looks and smells, mate, now that I'm retired, I'm, I'm aspiring to be something a bit like Paul Schofield. But I'm not quite getting in as much training. But it's always good to catch up with you, Paul. Spend always a bit a pleasure, of time mate. with uh, you, with the England Knights, obviously, in count with the Jamaica squad at the end of 2019. And obviously, Papua New Guinea. Unfortunately, not able to go the, the first tour to Papua New Guinea. You missed, I think you had a bit of a, a groin strain, Danny, didn't you? But how did you enjoy the Jamaica test? Loved it, mate. Um, you know, as everyone knows, last year was a, was a bit of a tough year for me. And, um, you know, to get the call at the end of the year to say, you know, you've been picked in, in the England Knights, it was sort of like, um, you know, I weight lifted off my shoulders and, you know, I loved every minute of it. You know, spending time a week with the lads that I've, I've never played before, never met before. And, um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it, mate. This weekend, big win, and you got the man of the match. First try as well, first meat pie for Cass. How did it feel? <laughs> yeah, I was buzzing, mate. You know, it's f I was like four weeks have gone by and I've still not scored. I thought I'm going to be on the nude run at this rate. <laughs> um, but no, I happy to, to get that one out of the way. And, and you know, it was, it was difficult conditions, and uh, you know, it was, it, it was good to just go and get the win there. So. How, how have you uh, found adopting Yorkshire? I think we had Brad Dwyer coming on talking about it in prawns last yeah, week. First time, uh, for first time coming over to Leeds. How's it been uh, getting joined up with the cast people and, and the fans there? I like it, mate. I love it up here. Um, you know, I, I've never mo really moved to a witness lad. Um, you know, and I've only ever played at Saints, so it was like sort of next door. You know, I've loved every minute of it up here. You know, the people are class. You know, the cast fans are, are, are as passionate as I've seen. And, um, you know, they, they get behind us every single game and they just make it enjoyable to go out and play for them. Scully, obviously, as an ambassador of the club at Saints and you, with the England setup, we, what were your thoughts when, when Saints let him go? Because a young player, loads of potential, um, but it must have been a tough call for the club. Yeah, it must have been, and, and no doubt controversial with, with, with some people's eyes as well. But I think, I think Danny will be the first to admit as well. I think it was a, it was a move, probably the right time f for him in his career. I think he needed to be a number one, which he is now at Cass. You know, he's got the seven jersey and he can develop his own career. And I think you need that opportunity to, to play and to play regular. And obviously, you know, Saints have, have got you know, a number of, of, of good halfbacks as well. Uh, T.O.'s doing a great job there at seven as well. So I think for Danny's development and for his game, you know, the, the, move, was, the move was perfect. And to go to a, to a great club like Cass and, and work with somebody like Daryl, and, it, and it's, it's telling his performances. Who was your inspiration growing up, Danny? Talked about some difficulties last year. Who were the people that you sort of put it forefront of your mind to get you over some of the adversity? Uh, you know, growing up, I'd probably say uh, when I was at my youngest, um, lads like Sean Long, um, you know, in, in the same team as like Scully and that, you know, looking at them, they, you know, they, they rip, rip teams apart. And, you know, yeah, I'd probably say him, him growing up. Do you know, it's funny, it's funny Danny mentions Longy and, and, you know, when I was talking before about, about Danny's development and his, and his move from Saints, that happened with Longy as a kid. He never got that opportunity at Wigan. So he kind of moved sideways to, to Widnes, which opened yeah. the door yeah. for him to Saints. And, and then obviously he got his opportunity and never looked back. And as I said, you know, Danny's, uh, Danny's not looked back. I think it's a, it's a really exciting time for, for Cass with, with a young halfback pairing of him and, and, and Truy. This weekend you took part, we mentioned it before, the St Helens uh, 10k. Um, talk to us about your relationship with Precky because obviously it's, it's amazing the work that Lindsay and the, the charity is doing, keeping his name alive and what he achieved while he was fighting cancer yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I mean Steve was uh, probably the most inspirational person I've ever, I've ever met. You know, one thing I always say we mustn't forget is what an outstanding rugby league player he was as well. You know, he was, he was one of the best fullbacks I've had the, the pleasure to play with and, and against and, 
you know, his fight after diagnosis, you know, just carried on in the in the same vein that his his, career, his rugby league career did, and you know, the the foundation obviously has continued to go from strength to strength, and you know, you look at the the ten k, it was a complete sellout at weekend, and as you say, all credit to to Martin Blondell and and the you know and Lindsay and the, and all the uh, the trustees of the the foundation because. You know, Steve's name is is such a, a commonly used name now. You know, within you know within our game, outside of the game. You know, with with, with some charities, with great fundraising. Uh, you know, and what bigger accolade than the, the Steve Prescott Man of Steel Award as well? Tonight we've got an action-packed show, guys. We're going to go to our first feature, and it's over to St Helens on home ground for Scully as we check out the St Helens 10K. Wagger Taurus is on debut, yes! I'm at the St. Helens 10K for Steve Prescott. Right, Twitter spoken. Before we start, Twitter spoken. I said, I'd do it in my budgies, right? I will do it in my budgies. <laughs> Sorry, girls. I will do this challenge in my budgies. 10K, there's some real legends of rugby league behind it. I'm on debut, it's my first run. I want to get a good time, so if you see me around, let's motivate me. Simon, yeah. right, you've, you've done all 10. I have, yeah. 10 year anniversary of yeah. the St. Helens 10K. Yeah. What's your PB? So you've done um, 10, what's your best? What's your best time? 46 minutes. 46 minutes? I've been looking for new 46. What are you going for today? Oh, I'm just going to enjoy today. I've done nine in nine. So we've, we've 18 of us have done uh, 10 days on the bounce. Yeah. So this is our 10th one. So today I'm just going to trot round and enjoy it. Buffer, 10 in 10, 10k. Yeah. 10 days. How's it gone? Not too bad, if I'm honest. Uh, eight and nine's been hard, but we've all got through it. So, yeah. What's it's been your best time so far? 54 minutes, something like that. What about you? Uh, 51. 51. Go on. 41. No, you're lying. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Keith, I'm doing it in my Yorkshire budgies. But I've got a T-shirt on, but how good is this event, the St. Helens 10K? Yeah, and I, th I think that's half a job, though, is that Wagger. Obviously, when you put a tweet out saying, should I do it in the Yorkshire bud budgie smugglers, you know that the answer's going to come back yes, because you want to get naked. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's not beat about the bush here. You want to be naked. So if you're going to do it right, you've got to do it properly, and you've got to do it with a top off as well. All right, I'll try my best then. <laughs> I'll try my best, Kim. <laughs> Lindsay, the St. Helens 10K. How good is this event? Do you know what? It's just got better and better every year. Looking back to 10 years ago when we first started it, um, I guess we were amateurs then. We, we started in like a, a council car park uh, and we've come here, we've got the great facilities of Saints. I can stay at that face. I can stay at ass pimping. 10k might only be 10k. But if you test yourself like everyone wants to on this run, doing it for a great cause, not, not just Steve Prescott Foundation, there's loads of other charities running today. And I think it's outstanding. Great event. Everyone can do it. Everyone's engaged. Martin. Wow, what an event. What goes on behind the scenes to volunteers to get something like this off the floor? 10 years anniversary as well. We start organising next year's 10k. 10 seconds after the last runner. Wow. It's a, a fantastic event. The community, St. Helens, and the rugby league community get behind it and support it. It's fantastic and it's great that we can keep the great man's name and legacy alive. Scully, I made my debut. I've got my first ever. Look at that, I'm oh, proud of it. How many of these have you done? That's me, seventh, seventh. It's obviously 10 year anniversary. Last three I've not been able to do, so uh, yeah, seventh one. All credit to, to Martin Blondell and the, uh, the SPF team, mate. They just. They were the stones after all the all year, and um, 
It's seamless. Run seamless again. It's getting yourself mentally prepared for it. So, you know, 10k, it's all preparation for the other runs. Uh, you know, so just seeing Moz, Jesus Christ, he looks as though he's played a game. He's sweating, Cobbs. That guy had a dig. <laughs> we've got one, we've got, I've got my first walk in. Is this, okay, another, is this another medal you've won now? Oh, yeah, all oh, right. Up to two. Grand finals, <laughs> challenge, Cobbs, wagon top. That means more to me. That means more. Adam, you have got an amazing story. Talk to us about it. Uh, so I had the same rare form of cancer as Steve Prescott, uh, a disease called Pseudomyxoma peritonei, and uh, unfortunately I was diagnosed with terminal illness, so, so I had two years to live. Um, I was the fourth patient in the world. Fourth? Fourth. So there was, so was Steve, two others, and then myself. Uh, and Steve went ahead and had the, the modified multivisceral transplant to, to remove all of his eight organs plus his tumour and he was transplanted with new organs. Um, sadly, as we know, Steve, Steve died of complications three, three weeks later, but it was a success, yeah. uh, which encouraged doctors to, to try again. And sadly, or, or whichever way you want to look at it, I'm the first survivor of the process, uh, the longest. I'm nearly five years now. Uh, five years. So How's that feel? Oh, oh amazing. Yeah, I mean, look, from, uh, from being fed through your neck uh, into your blood, not being able to really walk, looking looking at end of life care, to just going round that in in just over an hour. Should have been under an hour, but yeah, you inspired me, mate. Well done, mate. Thanks awesome, well mate. Done. What an amazing event! The Centella's 10K is unbelievable. Absolutely loved it. Great day, great event. Thank you to volunteers, Steve Prescott foundation uh, for all the organizing everyone's bought in it's been amazing i meant wagga taurus made his debut 45 35 pb a oh, pb baby pb i don't know if you saw jones it wagga put out a tweet <laughs> saying i'm not on social media do, do, but i've heard about do, it do you do, do you want to see me running my budgies or somewhere along those lines obviously Half at Women at World <laughs> tweeted him on six, he's ripped to death. Uh, he's gone and running his pants in his budgie smugglers. What do you think when he rocked up to the lion? <laughs> 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 oh, oh man, does, any, does anything surprise you with Wagger? Uh, yeah, man, that tweet was put out purely to yeah. say I'm running in my budgies. That's it. Yeah, man, what, uh, what a great guy and um, uh, what an athlete still. Yeah, he, lo he loves it. And he said to me, I'm going to go out to win. And he won. I have all former players. Uh, were you second or third? Second. Moz got in on 46 dead, yeah. he said. So uh, for you and Moz, you're a lot older than Wagga, both of you. To run that time... Oh, 12 stone heavier. Exactly. <laughs> you, 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 must be, you must be pleased with that time, 46 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You, do you know what? It's, uh, as you say, you still train. I don't particularly like, uh, like road running. Yeah. Um, I know Moz does quite a bit of running as well. Always see him up and down the, uh, the east flanks. He's done a, <laughs> he's done a few marathons and what have you. But you see, mate, it's just good to keep your, yeah. keep your hand in, isn't it? Uh, but what a, a great occasion the, the, the 10K was. And as you said, supported by, by so many ex-players as well. And it, let's talk about England. So we're going to see the first part of the England rights. When Sean Wayne were appointed, were you happy? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, Why? Well, I just think as an, you know, as an English lad, uh, growing up, you want... You want England players playing for England and England coaches coaching England. Um, you want to see someone with Sean Wayne's passion, yeah. like what he had for Wigan, representing the national team. Um, I, I think he can he can bring that out in us. Scully, what do you think are some of the best attributes that, that Sean Wayne will bring to England squad? Um, obviously, his passion. You know, I think we'll see that passion what he's, we're used to seeing it. You know, in that Wigan uh, in that Wigan tie. Um, now, now for our country, and uh, you know, I think everyone should should really get behind him. He's a great bloke, Wayne. You know, I've, I've been good good mates with Wayne for a, for a long time, and he's up to date with our players and our game, and, and and who's playing well, who's not. You know, and players coming through. He wants to say in the in the England in night. You know, we've I've had three or four meetings with Wayne already, with uh, with Baloo as well, and you know. It, there's a connection. The England Knights was brought back for a reason yeah. Yeah. to connect them them up and coming players who are potential senior England players. So there's got to be a connection with you with your head coach for England, and there is that now. Very very exciting times for uh, for, for for England, and what better to go into a, an Ashes series? Jonesy, I want I want you to lead us into this because you were appointed media manager for England Knights. You've yeah. been the women's as well. You've been over there to do Papua New Guinea. What was when you when you made this this documentary? 
Because what I love about it is it's just like your vision with a camera yeah. running around yeah. telling stories. So. I, I, I actually prefer being behind a camera than, yeah. than I do in front of it, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Um, I'm quite creative like that. I like editing them. I haven't edited this one. I've left it to our boy, oh, so yeah. it'll probably be a lot smoother, this Jamaican <laughs> version. But when I look back at the Papua New Guinea, I get a real deep sense of nostalgia, mm. at the experiences and the people that I went there with. And you know, when, when you retire and you reflect on your career, people always obviously talk about the big games and the finals that you yeah. win, but it's been impressed upon me more and more that it was always about the people and the experiences you have with those guys. You yeah. know, um, like these two here sitting on our sofa, and and it was a wonderful time, mate, in my life. And to be able to go back with the women was a bit different. And I was familiar with PNG the second time round. I knew yeah. what little back streets and where to go and where not to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, didn't have, I didn't have school in there to protect me the second time round. <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, it's wonderful. We've got a full uh, set of women's uh, little episodes to make. But yeah, this is the England Knights and uh, the Jamaica series, which she was obviously heavily, heavily involved in as well, yeah. Alex. Yeah, it's, it was a great experience from a Jamaica point of view. And it's led us into what's going to be hopefully a bigger year this year. I think it's 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 interesting because we were hoping to to maybe play England again this year or yeah. England Knights, and I don't think that might happen. Might not happen this year, but we'll see. Who knows? But I think internationally the game has got to go. We've got to tell these stories because it's inspiring people all around the world. And I think I'm excited to see it. So let's watch it. Let's watch it. Let's check this out. It's the uh, first part of the England Knights as seen by Jimmy Jones Buchanan. I love, I love playing. Uh, I love playing for England, whether it's 16s, 19s, uh, 18s, or nights. It's always an honour to put a shirt on, um, and yeah, to, to, to do it at Headingway and be, it'd be a big honour. And uh, I'd, you know, I'd love to pull an English shirt on and run out here in front of a good crowd. Yeah, ultimately, mate, you want to be in that World Cup, don't you? Um, and I think this is a good pathway for me um, to get in that team. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm playing for to keep me spot really. And keep, and what, what a good bunch of lads as well, isn't it? It's just, just the banter and the crack that we have around training and it's just an enjoyable place to be, you know, it's probably why you, you end up, you start up playing rugby, so yeah, really enjoy it and hopefully get that, get that, getting that World Cup scored. For Jamaica to be playing against Knights, it'll be a good test for us and a good test for them. I, I can imagine there's some good athletes there in Jamaica that could that could probably end up doing something. So it'll be good for them to, you know, either watch it or or try getting that squad. Because I, I can imagine there's some really good athletes out there. I was just eating my dinner actually, uh, sat with my family around the table, and um, yeah, I got the phone call off Paul Anderson, and uh, I thought somebody would take it Mick to start with. Uh, I thought it was one of the lads that just having a bit of crack and, and, and saying that I've been called into the night squad, but uh, it's my first time representing England other than uh, at youth level, so um, yeah, it's, it's a, be a big honour for me. I remember this first meeting and I was dead nervous, just just to um, because of the calibre of player that's there and, and obviously players that, that, that are in the England team at the minute that I've looked at uh, all my um, growing up playing as a kid, so to be able to um, not on the same level, but on the on the stepping stone to being that um, in that elite team is um, is pretty special to me. Seeing as old, I come from a rugby league background. All, all, all I've known from being four years old is is um, rugby league. All my family play it, and um, like I say, just just from growing up and watching people uh, play on the telly and and aspiring to be them. So when the word I'd use is that I was inspired, especially after the first one. Just just knowing that. Um, they're, the same, they're the same as me, they're, everyone's human, so they, when they're coming over for a chat and, and, and wanting to mingle with you and, and, and how you're doing and how you're getting on and how you're playing, it's, yeah, it just inspired me. My observation, the session is going to be the same as what we did the other day, alright? So, but my observation from last time, when we started, I thought we started with the talk and what have you, skill, ball down, stuff like that. I want us to start on the money today. We build our session from the beginning. It's a first. It's the first time an England team's played Jamaica. It's, uh, it's we're the only uh, England team that's going to play on home soil this year. So there's many, many challenges like that, and uh, it's going to be a different group as well. There's a fair amount of changes from uh, from people who went to Papua New Guinea to people who play this year. So there's there's always these challenges. And short-term rep coaching, we'll all have three sessions as a as a group uh, going into that game. So many, many challenges on the way, and uh, our challenge, as always, has got to be getting these players through to the. Uh, to senior rugby league with uh, England. Rep football, you want to dip your toe and just go into it, guess what? You get beat. Let's use the start and get ready to play here. I know I've got to make some tough calls over the next few days, but yeah, shouldn't dictate how we change, how we train here. Make sense? Yep, yeah. over to you, Sean, let's go. 
I've had a few seasons now uh, playing regular Super, uh, Super League and uh, yeah, it's definitely been one of my goals for the past few years to finally get it this season and be up for a selection in this game against Jamaica. Yeah, it's, uh, it means the world to me and uh, I know my family and Huddersfield are uh, yeah, proud of me also. When I got the call I was absolutely buzzing but uh, yeah, it's a weird feeling because yeah, obviously I looked up to him like you said last year and I played against him and there were some big lads so it's nice to be in it this year. He's definitely one for the future. As a young, young front rower, especially as you know, it's, it can take its time to, to adapt to playing the rigours of Super League and, and international football as well. But Harry's a little bit different, where he, uh, he's been around a fair bit now, hasn't he? He's, he's been playing dual reg for a few years at Featherstone, and we all know he's a, he's a great talent. But the thing more than anything is for, for Harry, his performances dictate that he should be in this group. Obviously, stepping up from the academy uh, to play nights in 2019, I just want to keep that going really and that's uh, only going to go off my performances for Leeds in Super League so um, I've got to work hard in pre-season and get ready for a, a big year. Every day when uh, there's people, obviously uh, injuries and stuff like that with the seniors and people dropping in and dropping out, is our our group constantly changes and that's how it should be from our point of view as coaching. We've got to be fluid and expect, and we should expect people, sorry, to be to pull to seniors and uh, and that's that's what we're here for and that's the exciting bit. To, we were sat around the TV, hopefully seeing Jack and Ash Handley playing the nines and then obviously uh, seeing them play with uh, GB. That would be uh, that would be even that's an even bigger achievement for us rather than. Uh, having successful tours and games because that's what we're here for. Yeah, Ash has been outstanding this year, obviously for Leeds as well. He um, finished second in the try scoring tally and uh, to play alongside Ash, I played that left centre next to him and he, yeah, he's a great guy, he's a great player and uh, obviously, obviously to have someone like that and a team in Leeds that I can look up to just motivates me even more to make that next step. Great to train with a lot of like older lads who've played loads of Super League games and I'm learning different things every day so I'm really enjoying myself. It's England. It's exciting. That's what we, that's the things that we should be. Uh, there's the challenges that we should have, and if we've got that excitement, then hopefully the performances should look after itself. That HM is something else. <laughs> it makes me feel sick. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm throwing up. Yes, uh, last training session. So yeah, that's how hard it is. You got a minute left, Tom, to do it. Minute left. Rower, you need over 19. You got a minute left to do it. What bike? You need over 23, you can do it. Nice Tommy, that's it. Not possible. You've been framed by Oliver Wilson. <laughs> I know, he's, yeah. He got him, you've you enlarged him right up there. I'm, I'm really fortunate. I think being a player, a lot of lads know me, so they, they, they yeah. let me get away with most journalists would do anyway, or cameramen. But yeah, I think that's the important part to document. It's all right going there and saying, this is really hard and really tough and this and that, but it's those moments that I want people to see that rugby players go through t in pursuit of greatness. Yeah. You know, to win a World Cup school, you've got to go through the toughest of environments and Manchester Institute of Health and Performance is a tough environment to be in, isn't it? It certainly is, it certainly is. You know, we had some, we had some good sessions, didn't we, in the, yeah. in the fallout there. You know, the, obviously some on-field stuff with the, the skill and keeping the boys, at, you know, and I, you know, with, uh, with obviously not playing for, for a number of weeks, but also, Keeping the uh, the fitness levels up in the uh, <laughs> in the altitude chamber. Uh, I reckon you two will compete with any of them boys. But we're going to talk more about uh, England nights for this part two coming up after the break. Right now, to take us into part two, you can win a very special experience because um, I don't, oh, you might think it's special, but we are raising money for Oblique Cares, and you can go onto our website, uh, rugbym.co.uk. Follow the link 
and the prize is you donate five pounds to Rugby League Cares for the ride through just the Just Giving page of our editor Jimmy Brails doing the ride uh, from Toronto to New York, and you can come here and stand behind the camera. And whoever's on that week, you might be lucky, you might get Sonny or Crystal or somebody, you come and sit behind the camera, meet everyone, we'll sign you a shirt and you can come for a feed after the show as well. Favourite bit? Favourite bit, yeah, <laughs> go for a feed, take the boys for a feed. Absolutely outstanding. So get online right now, rugbym.co.uk, and check it out. Also, a few other competitions on there. Uh, for all you winners out there, winners are grinners. We'll see you after the break right here on Free Sports. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome back, part two here on Free Sports. Uh, Dan, we're going to start with you this half, mate, because um, massive month for Cass. Firstly, have you, have you learned the words to Sweet Caroline yet? Yeah, I know, I know the words to Sweet Caroline. It's just the the song after the after the game when you're getting the sheds. And I've not got a clue. Not. So I've, I've asked them to print me some lyrics off, but it's still yet to come. So I'm just start, sort of stood there clapping along. Big month, Warrington away. They've obviously had some very indifferent form. Uh, then the big game for you guys, Saints at home. How's it going to be? Welcoming Saints to the jungle and you in the cast colours. Yeah, mate, obviously, you know, f- the Warrington game is is going to be tough. You know they're going to want to bounce back from from um, from the result against Leeds last week, and you know they've got the players to do that. And and then like you said, that you know the big one the week after is is uh, is Saints at home, and I've obviously had that fixture in in the book since you know the fixtures come out, and you know one I can't wait for. Um, you know I'm just hoping we get as many fans there as we can to you know make make that make the, the jungle a fortress and you know make it uncomfortable for for Saints because you know they're a, they're the top side, and um, you know I think. We've got to we've got to do everything to, to to try and get ourselves over the line. Do you, do you psych yourself up? Are you, are you a superstitious guy? Did you do a lot of school? Did, no, no. No. Did, did any players you know do, do there is, stuff? There is players that do that. There's yeah, a yeah. few. Mm-hmm. Give us a couple. Because I know Tim Spears is mad for it. So Tim Spears from Feb walks around. Kieran Kieran Cunningham for somebody who's, who's played at the top level for so long. Yeah. No matter who we played, you know, it could be one of you. One of you your League One sides in a, in a Challenge Cup and guarantee he'd be, he'd be spewing up before a game. Yeah. Constantly. Um, before every game. Wow. I don't know if that was nerves or it was just part of his routine. <laughs> 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 or a big night yeah. before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, anyone else said when you played with any, any weird superstitions? Uh, no, not that, I, not that I can think of. I sort of just keep myself to myself in the, in the changing rooms. And, you know, like Scully said, I, I get nervous. Um, yeah. yeah, I get nervous and things like that. Um, and, and excited and um, but no nothing nothing superstitious. What's been the worst feeling you've had I mean, since you've been playing? What what were the I mean, and who do you phone? Who was the person who you go to? Is it your family? Yeah, I mean, well, I'd probably say the f- the first game this year. Yeah, you know, obviously coming up off the back of you know last year. Yeah, um, and not not sort of playing. <laughs> I was just like for some for some reason I, I you know I'd. Basically, f- thought that I'd forgot how to to do everything and on really? the field kind of thing, and you know I was sort of scared stiff. I was excited more than anything, yeah. but I was like, "Who gets oh. you through that?" My mum and my yeah, mum and dad mom. definitely. Mom, my mum and dad, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit of a mummy's boy at heart, <laughs> and you know I'm, I'm 24 this year, and I'm still. This now. She, she will be, now. she will be, yeah, and you know she'll be buzzing because she always goes, "Oh, you always mention your dad all this that and the other," but <laughs> your mum, there's time for you here, mum. So. <laughs> yeah. I no. remember, I remember England Knights interview that I did with before Papua New Guinea when you thought you was going, and I was asking you about your vaccinations. And you said, I haven't got it done yet. My mum's going to sort it out for me. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'll be lost. I'll be lost without her. You know, come up here and, you know, I've been been trying to rent my house out at home, and you know, I've, I get how much free time in the day, and I've still sort of not got time to sort all that. So I've told them, give me mum's number, and she's sorting everything out for me. So yeah, I'd be lost without her. Did you, did you do you listen to music before you play? Yeah, yeah. What was your prep before you played school? Going in there. Did you listen to music or did you have any routine? No, 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 my man was, man, I was pretty relaxed before games. The Re- reason I ask is because oh. changing rooms have definitely changed over the last 20 years. Maybe from when you started earlier than what I did. Like, for example, back then you, you wouldn't have had 
music on your mobile phone, would you? So you would uh, certainly when I grew up, you would never have taken your mobile phone at gym rooms if it pinged during like a, a team talk. What happened? The tables would be going over, <laughs> and you'd be thinking, I might as well get myself off because I'm not playing next week. Yeah. But now there's there's alarms going off, and I'm on a minute, and just it, 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 do you know what? It was, it was mad. I was down at I was down at Saint session before the um, sorry, it was it before the, the the that Super League game before the the Roosters game. And uh, they were going out. I was down at pitch side. I took a few few kids down to yeah. uh, to watch captains run, and uh, they walked out with the, the big boom box and that. And music's playing while they're doing captains run. I mean, blaring <laughs> in the yeah. stadium, and it's not like simulating crowd noise or anything. Yeah, it's just it's banging tunes. Banging tunes. That bit of banging tune. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, do, do you know what? I, th I think yeah. that was last year when Matty, yeah. Matty Daniels yeah, and uh, they went over to to um, I think it was an NFL side, and they were doing it while they were yeah. training. Yeah, so I think, uh, do you know what? Over here and even even sat there watching, you know, you're buzzing. Just you, you just want to get out there and, and join in them. So I mean, for the for the players, it's just a great environment, yeah. and you you want to enjoy yourself. You want to have fun when you're training. You know, you're doing yeah. something you, you you thoroughly enjoy. And uh, why not do it to music? Let me ask you something, Scully, because it, it, this fascinates me. You've got a son who was at Wigan, who is now 19 year old. Are you pretty strict with him? Do you go to him and do you do you, do you give him it in terms of this is the expectation? Because he's got he's got school for the name is is an expectation. He's always going to have to carry it with him. But do you try and help him with that, or do you do you lay the law down with him? No, I mean, with him? if I if I can give him any advice, I certainly, yeah. I certainly will do. Obviously, we're, we're very close, and no, I think he's uh, he's grown up in that environment. Obviously, you know, mm. I did it when I was I was twenty one, so he's yeah. he's seen a big part of my career anyway, and the things that I've things that I've done, the things that I've gone through. Yeah. Um, so he's he's grown up with it, you know, and he, he, very lucky that he's he, he switched on, you know, mentally to to what's required to, you know, to make it in in this game. And no, but no pressure for me. And that's you know, everyone says, oh, what's it like being at Wigan rather than Saints? I'm glad, you know, he, go make his own name. He's, he, you know, he's, he's not he's not out there to make it, you know, at Saints because I was there. Um, he's out there to make his own his own name and his own career. My. Uh my second oldest lad, Dax, is year seven now, so that makes him about 12. He's been training at Cass. About 12. He makes him about 12. <laughs> about 12. Uh, well, that's yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's funny, yeah, yeah. He's, he's been training at Cass, and that was awkward when he, when he went. I think he does some of their academy stuff. I just don't talk to him anymore. He <laughs> <laughs> won his favourite. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore don't worry, I'll look, I'll look after him. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about winners, uh, there's a chance to win uh, on RugbyM right now. Get yourself to rugbyM.co.uk and check out a fantastic competition to win four hospitality tickets to the whole derby, courtesy of Bachelor's Peas. Hi, I'm Jordan Abdul from Hull KR. For your chance to win tickets to the Good Friday derby, click the link below and enter courtesy of Bachelor's Peas. You could be a winner. All you've got to do is go online, rugbym.co.uk, get involved. I don't know, do you follow the NRL much, boys? Are you NRL fans? Yeah. Uh, a little bit, yeah, you know. Who's your team? I'm, I was going to go Souths because they had the most English lads in it, but I'll go Canberra now. Cause, you go Canberra? Yeah. What you, Scully? Yeah, I've, I've no team, mate, but... Um, if you could have gone played for any team in NRL, who would it be? Do you know what, my, I say my team that I've always I've always admired and followed. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I was playing, was was the Broncos. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to move to NRL? Yeah, I got I got approached. Uh, so it should be about about 2002, 2003. I had, uh, I had two offers: uh, Roosters and Penrith. Why Why did you not go? A number of reasons. One One big one, probably the major one, was 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 family and just taking taking Jake away from from grandparents from for for no other benefit really than than playing in the NRL. Uh, financially, was no better off. Yeah. Um, I think I proved myself on international la level. You know, it wasn't a case of can you make it in the NRL. I think uh, you know, proved that international that I'd, I could hold my own. Um, so everything, the pros and cons. Um, there was more to, to to stay at Saints. I just signed a, a new five-year deal. NRL news, obviously recently, Luke Thompson, uh, your old teammate, going over to the doggies. How 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 will they do? I think he'll rip it up, mate. You know, I'm, I'm, what's he like as a bloke? He's class. I'm, I'm is close it? mates with Tomo, yeah, um, and you know, he's he is one of probably the most um, professional, uh, you know, at training that I've seen. You know, he, his diet is you know second to none, and you know the way he trains is just, 
is 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 unbelievable. And you know, f I reckon he'll just go over there and you know, kind of do what Sam Burgess did when he. Um, I know he's a bit younger, God, but God. Yeah, I, I think he's that good. Yeah. You know, I think he's the best prop in the world. And um, you know, I, I can't wait to see him get out there and, and do his thing. I'm, I'm, how much more of an influence has he been on some other Saints forward like Matty Lee's and Morgan Knowles and some of those guys? Because they, they, they're almost in his mould to a degree as they get older. They run so strong, consistently hard every week, and how much of an influence has he been? Probably massive, you know, especially for you know for Matty. He's, he's yeah. sort of the similar similar player, you know, not not taking a backward step and um, try to sort of mould their game. To, to become like Tomo. Yeah, Tomo, you, you, as Danny said, you, he's just the ultimate professional. I think you can tell that with his with his physique, yeah. you know, with his fitness, with the, with the way he plays the game. What I like best about him, and I think it's it's a trait am, amongst all the Saints front rowers, I like the way they play. Yeah. The no nonsense front rowers who like to run over people. Yeah. They don't want to. They don't want to be a standoff like half the props in Super League, you know. And, and that's the way the game's call gone. Them and, and I'm not, call them out. And, and I'm not a fan of it. I'm not yeah. a fan of it. But you know, you look at the way Saints play, and you look at the way Luke yeah. Thompson, uh, Alex Worms, and Matty Lee's play. Yeah. And you look how James Roby and, and uh, Aaron Smith can get on the back on the back of a quick player the ball because of the way they play yeah. and everything that comes on the back of that. Um, you know, these props who, who, who as I say, who want to be standoffs and play in a dinner suit is, uh, is not for me. It's time now to go over to check out part two of the England Knights documentary. Check this out. You know, a lot of lads, before they go, go to PNG and experience it, they'll, they'll be saying, you know, asking me, well, what's it like? And I, I won't really go there, but honestly, it was, it was second to none. And, um, just the bond that you get with the lads that you travel with as well. Um, you know, you put together and we're all from different teams, don't really know each other and come out the other side of it and at the end of the trip and you know, you, you are good friends who, who were then, you know, texting and it was just a great trip all around and a good life experience, real good and it was um, one that I'll definitely take, take something from. Um, obviously playing that, the, the last game of the year when we got beat by Warrington in the, the, uh, the semi-final and uh, about 15 minutes ago I'd done like a kick-off or I think it was like a kick and a, just felt me grind, just got like sort of ping a bit, and um, you know I managed to carry on for the rest of the game. I said to Millsy at the end of the thing, I said, uh, "Look, mate, I've, I've, I reckon I've done something here." Uh, anyway, it turns out I went for a scan. He said, "Yeah, there's a little tear on your grind. Um, you're going to need like all this, this PRP injection, blah blah blah, um, and you're not you're not going to be able to go to, to Papua New Guinea like." So obviously, I was gutted about you know losing the, the semi-final. Um, and then I got, obviously got told that I couldn't go there. So I had a bit of a, like a double whammy. Um, you know, I was gutted, but oh, that's rugby, isn't it? It was just natural in, in PNG for the lads had to be close because I think you, you kind of had to be. I was so far away from home and um, you had to be close to, to, to make the time feel good. And um, here we, we've only got a week together, so it, it is a little bit different. But, um, you know, we're going for a feed tonight together and uh, we've got another training session tomorrow. So I'm sure you'll see little bonds, you know, coming together. All right, fellas, uh, just get cracking with this, eh? We won't keep you too long. Uh, firstly, congratulations on your selection, all right? Uh, just for information, there's 19 in here, uh, and we'll be, we'll be naming a team of 17 tomorrow. All right, so unfortunately, two people are going to miss out, but we're a group, all right? So we, we push through this together and we work hard and keep working hard for each other. Sweet. Just a couple of things from me when we're in these meetings. No hats and no flip-flops. All right, make sure you've got trainers on. Uh, we'll get to you later on that. You owe us something. All right. Uh, Harry, come on, pal. There you go, mate. So, Harry, last night, just to get into the story, we sat down with half suckers and whatever, didn't we? And uh, I up because I didn't tell you at the time and you were just tucking yourself in, weren't you, into bed? Yeah. Yeah, so I dragged him back downstairs and said he's just got to come up with entertainers, if I'm being honest, in 10 facts about Jamaican rugby league. And let's go, pal. Um, so Jamaican rugby league was established in uh, July 2004, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, they currently rank 14th in the world. Um, the home stadium is the University of West Indies. Um, the biggest loss was 54-4 to America. Um, 
The nicknames. <laughs> the nicknames are the Raji Warriors. Reggae Warriors. Well, Reggae, sorry. <laughs> 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 Luckily to have experience last year with Paul, he was around when we were training with the academy but uh, just always learning something new is really good and you're always going to learn something uh, talking to them too, yeah. Uh, my last thing that I will announce today before I announce the team is our captain will be Sam Powell. Congratulations Paul. <laughs> Look, I just want to couple of things for Sam, why I've, and it was why I chose Jack Hughes last year, for the same sort of reason. Champion blow and if leads by example. Really, you know, really excited to, um, to lead the lads and um, one of, you know, massive honour for myself. Um, anytime you, you get asked to represent your country is great and to captain's even better. Oh yeah mate, you know, you, you've only got to look at what he does for Wigan. Uh, he's sort of at the catalyst of them and he, he gets them, you know, going from nine and you know, he, he leads. He leads massively by his, his actions. Um, the way he plays the game is tough. You know, he's all the one percenters, and, and that's what you want from a from a from a captain kind of thing. And you know, hopefully, as a spine, um, we can we can steer the ship and you know get the win against Jamaica. Yeah, it came to a shock of me, a uh, shock to be honest, uh, when I got the phone call, Paul. And it's just been a really good proge progression this year. Obviously, playing against uh, like Tommy Lynham and Toby King, who we're going to play with this week, and. Was, I was able to test myself against him last year now to play alongside him, just so surreal, yeah. So, you know, when Paul rang me, I was like, pff, nearly burst into tears. I was that, you know, I was that, I was that like, buzzing about it because I've not, not played and stuff. And, you know, I've not had that feeling where, you know, you look forward to a game day in a while. And, you know, I, yeah, like I said, I nearly burst into tears. My mum was actually sat across from me and she did, and that sort of like, nearly set me off. But, you know, I was buzzing. So the number one thing that we have to have is respect. Not, not just for them, but for us and for what we're wearing. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, I've got no pre preconceived ideas in regards to what we're expecting, because we don't know. I can't sit here and tell you, this is how they're going to defend. You know, like when you're in your clubs, you get all your video work, these are things that will isolate and all this type of stuff. I know nothing about them, so I can't give you that. I've got a little bit of stuff which we'll talk about tomorrow, but it's just effort-based stuff. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds Stadium is one, one of my favourite grounds to play at, like a, as an away player. Um, you know that it's always loud, and, and um, you know, like I said earlier, for me, just to, to represent England is like a, it's a massive honour. You know, I've never 16s, 18s, whatever, I've never had the chance to do it. Um, you know, so it's something new for me. Um, like completely looking forward to it. And like you say about Jamaica, I think like any any rugby league team, you know, trying to grow the game, I, I, I think it's, it's fantastic for the game. And um, you know, that, like I say, I don't know much about them. Um, so it, it's it's like a, a new challenge and it's a bit of a surprise for us, but you know one we're looking forward to. It's a bit of um, going into unknown to be honest. Um, we're not sure what we're going to come up against, so I suppose we've just got to concentrate on ourselves and um, you know we've only got a week to, to gel together and try and put our best performance out there. And yeah, like I said, we we, we don't really know what we're going to come up against, so um, I think training is going to be all about us and just preparing to, to put our best game forward. We've got four, three sessions together, four days including the game. Yeah, this is about f***ing us. When we get out there, we get it done, we get done, we get back and we enjoy it ourselves. Rip into some weights, which some of you enjoy that, don't you? Yeah, he's um, exciting to watch. Um, he's played really well this year for the you know, Wigan Academy. And he's, he's, um, he played really well in the England Academy as well when they beat Australia. So um, Harry's he's, he's an exciting player. And um, we've all seen what Danny Rich can do on the field. He's, um, he had a great year, not the one previous. and. Uh, put them together, it's, it's exciting really. We've, we've had a day to end today and you know, they look really flash with the ball, so hopefully they can deliver that. Me and Harry are actually cousins. Um, yeah, well, his mum's cousins with my mum, so we're like second cousins. And um, obviously when I, the team got announced on the Tuesday, because I didn't know, I didn't know, like he hadn't, he hadn't said out. And uh, the team got announced on the Tuesday and I looked and I, I realised there was only two halfbacks and I was, you know, I thought, well, we'll play with Harry here. So straight in the family WhatsApp, I was like, I was buzzing. Um, you know, I can't wait. And, Obviously, I can sort of try and help him out. You know, with, obviously, I've played over 50 Super League games, whatever it is, but I, I can, with my short experience, maybe help him out a bit. And, you know, I, hopefully, we can strike a good partnership and help us get the win. We're uh, second cousins, yeah. 
No, grew up with Danny, yeah, uh, always played rugby, but I've never been able to play with him. I've be, uh, been able to play against him this year when he played for Lee and I played for Swinton, but this is going to be the first time playing together, it's going to be really good, yeah. The next two days in regards to practice today, it's going to be a little bit more relaxed. All right, we'll do some broken down stuff, we'll do a little bit of our principles and what we're about, and what we're going to go, all right. Uh, tomorrow will be an hour on feet, but we'll have half an hour on our own, then we'll have half an hour on some of the stuff against the academy that we're going to talk about tomorrow morning. All right, take all your boots and stuff around there, but be, be wary when we come back. All right, don't be coming in here, get up and mudded up, go get yourself cleaned up, and then come back down here for your dinner. So, we respect the environment. All right, let's go. This weekend, Leeds, Toronto. Yeah, big game. Welcome, Brian McDermott, back to Back, it. yeah. Coming back with Big Sonny Bill. Um, bad singleton out for a few months apparently. Yeah, I think, four uh, months rest of the is, a, An injury um, which is uh, unfortunate and obviously uh, Mullally as well coming back but listen it's all about us this week we've got to play well again and just back up I've already said you know to uh, let yourselves down with a poor performance after last week would be a travesty so big challenge for us I think Brian McDermott has talked about the fact that Toronto are getting better each week and I know Brian Mack as, as well as anybody from a coaching player point of view uh, and he believes what he's saying that Toronto will, will get some scouts will get some wins because they've got the potential score out there yeah they, they certainly have and I say I like, I like the way that you know they, they play parts of the game and, and certainly they throw the ball about I know uh, John, John Wilkin I think has been has been exceptional for them this year you know a lot whether Wilco will go around again obviously he's come to the, the twilight of his career but I just think he's, he's experiencing you know in, in passing on to, to some of the, the younger and, and more less ex experienced players who have come up through uh, through championship but yeah they've, they've got a tough ask you know there's got to be a certain point where they, they've got they've got to start winning games though Looking towards this week for yourself, obviously we mentioned it before, Warrington, Cass, big big week. What, what's the what's the chat and you're getting some players back as well? Yeah, for us, mate. You know, it, it, we we were in on Sunday. Um, yeah, like I say, it's going to be a tough game, but you know, we're we're, we're going to come and, and you know try and take advantage because uh, you know they might have a, have a knocked confidence at the minute kind of thing, and you know we'll be looking to take advantage of that. Working Sunday, some more doing extra time. To pay for those 550 quid yeah. chairs. Yeah. Hey, talk, 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 talk as one of these chairs. What are these? Comfort, mate. Comfort. 550. You're balling today. He's got the Ralphie on. Ralphie full scouts. Full scouts for tonight. Since you've been at Cast, who's your friends? Who've you made? Yeah, every team have got little clicks and they've got little. Who have you really warmed to? Who's kind of taking you under the wing? Well, I'd probably say. Because I'm, I'm sort of like in between, you know, like between like the younger lads who are like 19, 20 and then the lads who are like 29, 30. I'm sort of like in between, but um, I'd probably say I'm, I'm closer to like, uh, obviously, Truey, yeah. Jax O'Neill and, and Cal Turner. Yeah, you know, Jax O'Neill's phenomenal, isn't he? They're about my age and, you know, we, we, we're, getting, we're getting on well and <laughs> we've had a few weekends out and that, so, uh, yeah, probably say them boys. But, you know, the, the, the whole group of classmates, I get on with everyone and... You know they made me feel feel welcome since day one, and you know I, I love turning up to training every day with him. So does Jack still think he's the best looking man in cast? Yeah, he still does. Yeah, still thinks it. It's a new boy in town now. Isn't a new boy in town now. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, hey, one, one half back, I'm sure you looked up to uh, in most players. That is Jonathan Thurston. Uh, one thing he really touched on is culture, culture within a team. And a big part of the culture was the indigenous versus the Maori game, and talking about passion. Uh, this is plain to see, obviously, the, the, a huge game, fiercely contested, and it's fantastic to see both the men's and women's team coming together uh, with singer-songwriter, Maori singer-songwriter Stan Walker, uh, giving a great performance with the teams post-match. Check this out as we play uh, out of the show now. Good night and God bless. So a song written for the Maori team and also the Indigenous, and within it, it all the that that cloud belongs to both of us and so even though that our indigenous brothers are far away even though our own whanau is far away that in our hearts you're always close like the mouth on the aroha so anai ki a aotearoa e we are done
working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star event.